Amen. Well, good morning, church. Good morning. It's awesome to be here with you this morning. Exciting to be here with the family of God, the Delaware International Christian Church. Amen. And you know we had a we had a great time at devotional Friday night once again. We had a, a amazing game of musical chairs. And and Rick stole the victory. Uh, unlike the New York Giants, amen. But but we can still have gratitude today. And actually we're going to be studying out one of the most powerful qualities in existence which is gratitude. We can either do everything in our life with gratitude or without gratitude. And the outcome of what our choice is will be radically different. Last week, we talked about sharing our testimony. The power of our testimony gives us the power to remember the kinds of things the Bible calls us to be grateful for. This past Wednesday, the men had a testimony workshop. And that was a lot of fun where we practiced sharing our testimonies in a way that is effective and relatable to help win other people because our power is in our testimony. And when we share our testimony, it reminds us of how God has worked in our lives. Every time we share something about God in our testimony, it reminds us for ourselves, for our own hearts. And we think about God, we know that God is a perfect parent to us. We know that parents understand gratitude. We're talking about gratitude today, right? We know that parents understand gratitude because they have kids. Parents have kids. That's what makes them parents. And they understand gratitude because when they have kids, they have to clean up after them. They have to clean them themselves. They have to feed them. They lose sleep for them. They sacrifice for them, and they do all sorts of things that go unnoticed constantly. And they try to give the kids everything that they want. But the funny thing is what makes a parent lose their gratitude is not being shown gratitude. When a parent doesn't get gratitude, they can feel themselves, well, people are not grateful for me. Fine, I'm not going to be grateful for them. But this is this would be true not just for parents, but for all sorts of relationships. We can take things for granted from other people. When we want to be shown gratitude and we don't get it, it can make our heart ungrateful ourselves. Yeah. And in the end, that's what a parent wants their child to do is to be grateful. I mean, I've had some times in my life where I didn't realize how entitled I was until I look back right now. I'm grateful that God has shown me what gratitude is because my parents did so much and I didn't realize it until after the fact. And in those moments, I I did not show them a lot of gratitude, and I'm sure that they struggled a little bit. (laughs) And so, you know, if God is a perfect father, and we can understand that from our own fathers, our own parents, how much more for God when he does all these things for us, and yet he does infinitely more? He sacrificed his one and only son, Jesus, so we can be in his presence. This should be the root of all of our gratitude for God. And yet, oftentimes in our life, we can respond with entitlement or ingratitude. And we live in an entitled society. Have you guys ever seen the movie Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory? Yeah. This one is the one with Gene Wilder. It's like the old one. Okay. The new one is pretty good, but there's an old one. Some of you all may not have seen it, but there's this girl in there. Her name is Veruca. And she's the most entitled girl in the whole thing. And she shows up and she wants what she wants. And she even sings a song, I want it now. (laughs) If you haven't seen it, I recommend seeing it. You know what I'm talking about. (laughs) But at at times, a lot of us can have that same attitude and we don't really have the gratitude we're supposed to have. It's our natural tendency to become entitled when we become used to or accustomed to the situation that we're in. When I turn on the water faucet, what do I expect? When that doesn't happen, what do I feel? What? What? (laughs) Or sometimes it feels even worse when you turn on the hot water faucet and what comes out? Cold water. How do we feel? I'm calling the landlord. I just bought this water heater. Whatever. 
Or when we turn on the light switch, right? The lights don't turn on. You're like, what? What's going on? And then uh, I realized for myself how entitled I can be when the internet goes out. When you're at home or you're in a place where the Wi-Fi does not work and you're like, I really need this. I realize how entitled I am because I'm so used to saying, Alexa, turn on my lights. And then when there's no internet, it says, I'm having trouble connecting. It's like, I said turn off, you know? Are you telling me I have to go flip a physical switch? Yes. How entitled. <laughs> and these things, you know what's funny is these things are so trivial. And yet they can get the most out of us. But, but these trivial things, I think a lot of people in their mind want to be grateful for. And even parents, when they're, when they're feeding their kids, if they don't eat their meal, what do they say? There's a starving kid in another country <laughs> that didn't get their food. You need to eat this food. Yes. I always wondered about that, because how could they get that food? Like, if I don't eat it. But the point is, it's supposed to teach us a lesson about gratitude. Yeah. And yet, even these things, society says, yeah, you should be grateful for your food. Your parents worked hard, blah, blah, blah. Now, what about remaining grateful when society says you deserve to be ungrateful when somebody wrongs you when you're hurt by somebody what about remaining grateful then what about when you lose a job for an unjust reason or you're treated unfairly or maybe a family member passed away before we thought they should pass away or what about just our daily struggles when things don't go right when our car doesn't start when we expect it to, what do we feel? We feel upset. In Romans 8.28, it says, And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. If this is true, if God really works in all things for the good of those who love him, then that means that God is consistent and we can actually get our hearts behind whatever circumstance is there because we can totally trust that God really works in all things. Even in the circumstance that doesn't make sense to us. Yeah. And God gives us the privilege of the process of figuring out the heart we're supposed to have during those times. But we must remember to have gratitude to God for what he's doing. Gratitude has the power to change our attitude. And enough gratitude can solve any bad attitude. Let's look at Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3. Hopefully you brought your Bibles or you can share with someone next to you. We're going to get into God's Word today. Colossians chapter 3 verse 15. It says, Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you were called to peace, and be thankful let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. This passage says to let the peace of Christ rule in our hearts. What is ruling our heart this morning? When we truly have peace, that world-changing peace in our heart, it's a world-changing power. That can only really come from our gratitude to God. We could attempt to do all the things that this scripture teaches. We could attempt to teach each other the word of God. We could attempt to admonish one another. And we could even come to church and sing. But if we don't do it with the gratitude that God wants us to have, is it really what God is asking for? Have you ever had to sing happy birthday for someone you didn't like? In school? It's like, oh, it's their birthday. Okay. <laughs> or you're jealous because your sibling got a better birthday present than you did when it was your birthday. You know, when we sing to God without gratitude in our hearts, it's like pulling teeth. We have to do all these things with gratitude. I mean, when I was a kid, my parents would take me shopping for clothes. And back then, I was super ungrateful for this. I did not like going to spend hours of my day, my Saturday, right, my Saturday, at 10 years old or whatever I was, 
going shopping for clothes when I didn't get my time during the week to play my video game. I wanted to stay home. I want to do what I want to do. Mom had to take me to the mall, and now I'm going shopping for clothes. Mom, it's Sunday. We just got done with church. Can we go home? I want to play. No, we're going to go shopping for some clothes. Man, how entitled I was to my me time. And I was ungrateful. I would have rather probably gone to the video game store. If she said, hey, we're going to the video game store. We're going to get you a new game. I would be pretty, like, pretty fired up. Uh, but you know what's funny now today, if my mom and dad called me and said, hey, we're coming to, out to Delaware and we're going to take you shopping at the Christiana Mall, here's your budget, we're going to get you a bunch of clothes, I'd be like, sign me up. <laughs> and you know what? It's funny because our gratitude and our perspective of our gratitude changes over time for what we really understand is valuable. But we become much more grateful for different things. But when we think about our gratitude for God, the true gratitude for God is never changing because God is never changing. We can get deeper in our gratitude, but God is what's going to be consistent in our life to be grateful for. I mean, if we're grateful that we got a new job, we're pretty excited at first, right? It's like, man, I got my job. That's pretty awesome. I remember when Harmony got her job at Chick-fil-A. Yeah. She was ranting about it. But you know what? Then, 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 and I can relate to this too. You're super excited for a job, but then a few weeks later, you realize this is work. And it's not the way that I wanted it to be in this way. And this, you know, and, and, and there's an there's a epidemic of people that just complain. Harmony's not a complainer. I'm not calling her out. But, but just in general, there's, there's a heart of, I'm entitled to more than this. This is not enough yeah. for me. And we are bombarded with that attitude all the time. And we can fall victim to it. But, you know, we can, if we, if we are grateful for a new job or, or we're, out, we're grateful that something happened the way that we wanted it to happen. I mean, I remember when I found out that Sydney liked me. I liked her the whole time, but she never liked me until like at a certain point. And when I found out, I was like, wow. I'm super excited. You know, you feel on top of the world. It's like, I'm on the moon. I feel so great. But as any married person will tell you, the honeymoon phase comes to an end. And for me and Sydney, I don't think we have found that point yet. But I will say that I have struggled with ingratitude at times. And that's how people can be. When you get used to something that is not God, you can become ungrateful. If we follow since society, the challenge that we face is staying grateful to God. I mean, imagine if we tried to sing to God, but it's out of gratitude for something temporary. That's not the gratitude that God wants us to have. If we try to fit in with society, we also become entitled. And that's the challenge we face is to remain grateful in an entitled world. The power of gratitude is that it can solve any bad attitude. Gratitude has the power to change your attitude. Fighting to keep our gratitude is the journey of finding the right perspective, no matter what happens. When we truly have gratitude for God, we have the right perspective. Our first point is the power of perspective. Let's look at James chapter 4. James chapter 4, verse 1. In James 4, verse 1. It says, what causes fights and quarrels among you? Don't they come from your desires that battle within you? You desire but do not have, so you kill. You covet, but you cannot get what you want, so you quarrel and fight. You do not have because you do not ask God. When you do ask, you do not receive because you ask with wrong motives. That you may spend what you get on your pleasures. You can think of any conflict in your life, and most conflict in our life is going to come from us not getting what we want. Think of any conflict in your life, and you could probably trace it back to somebody or something that we don't want or we don't get. And we, we want what we want, and we don't get it. Having that heart and that conflict that comes from that comes from a lack of gratitude. A lack of gratitude is a bad attitude, which then will give us the wrong motives. And that's what God is talking about in this passage, is our motives. But a person with the proper perspective 
can move God's heart because they're grateful for what God is doing in their life and they fully trust in God. Their prayers are filled with gratitude to God because they know that there is a God and I'm not him. Amen. <laughs> and everyone else, when we, when we pray to God with our own personal motives, we can pigeonhole God into this idea of what we want God to do for us. But we need to have a proper perspective. God is not just a magic genie in a bottle to pray to when it's convenient for us. Have you ever seen a kid get a temper? Maybe we are that kid that had a temper. And I've seen these kids, I don't know for myself, I mean, I know I've thrown tempers before, but at the grocery store in the checkout line when the kid sees a candy, and they say, I really want that. Mom says no. And then, I don't know, like the kids rolls on the floor, is crying. It's funny when we, th when we see a kid, like that kid needs to learn a lesson, you know? That kid needs a whooping or whatever we think. But the funny thing is we do the exact same thing to God in our hearts. What does getting a temper toward God really look like for us? I want you to think about that for yourself. When, I, when things don't go my way, how do I act? How do I react towards God? How do I react towards other people in my life? Because when things don't really go our way and we blame people, it's really God we have a problem with. Yeah. Maybe it looks like not giving your heart and your prayers. Yeah. Or going through with the singing happy birthday to God on Sundays when you're really upset that he didn't do something for you. Or things didn't go the way that you wanted them to. Or maybe it's when you read the Bible and you don't really connect with it because there's something in your heart that you hold against God. We, we, can, have, we can relate to that. There's been times in my life where I've thrown a temper tantrum in my prayer. You know, it's better to pray to God about all your attitudes than to keep them bottled up. Yeah. And I've had those prayers and I just imagine where, where I'm like, God, why did this or that happen? Or why, why do I feel this way? This is not fair. I don't want to feel this way. This is stupid. And I have one of those ten th temper tantrum prayers. And, uh, and I just imagine God sitting there. All right, son. All right. I hear you. Are you done? When I'm done, he's like, okay, are you done? I heard you. You know, because God is patient. But he, he wants us to be grateful. He wants us to have gratitude. Yeah. The same way that gratitude is powerful in our lives, when, we're, when, when you meet a grateful person, they're just, they're just something else. It's like, man, that person, all this stuff happened to them, and yet they're still joyful somehow. How is that true? Gratitude is powerful, but in the same way, a lack of gratitude is equally powerful in the opposite direction, in a bad way, because it stops God from giving us what we ask for. When we're ungrateful and we ask God for things in our prayers, we're asking from a wrong motive. Of course, he's not going to answer your prayer like that. When you get that bad attitude, your bad attitude gives you the wrong motives. And so a lack of gratitude gives us the wrong motives. While gratitude is incredibly powerful, so is ingratitude. You guys know what an ingrate is? It's, like a, it's a term that means someone who's ungrateful. Being an ingrate stops God from giving us anything we ask for because it's not prayed with the proper perspective. An indicator of gratitude in our hearts is evident when the fruit of God's spirit are present. In Galatians 5.22, it says that the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. So we can have those things as much as we want, and God is fired up about that. There's no law against those things. To restore those fruit of the Spirit in our hearts, we must have the Luke 11 prayer. If you don't know what that is, it's in Luke 11, verse 1 through 4, and it's Jesus' example of how to pray. When we pray Jesus' prayer every single day, it can restore the fruit of God's Spirit in us, regaining the gratitude that we need to change our attitude. Or, you know, sometimes we can pray to God when we have the wrong motive and, and we ask God for something, and it's called the bargaining prayer. Like, God, I'm looking for a parking space. If you just give me a parking space, I'll do this thing. 
I mean, that's trivial, but sometimes that thought goes through your head. Yeah. Or, or you, you know, when, when things, when thing, you want something real bad, you're like, God, if you just do this for me, then, you know, maybe I'll, then I'll go share my faith with 10 people right now. You know, it's like, like God is going to bargain with you. What do you have to offer God, really? <laughs> you know, the true bargain is that Jesus died on the cross for your sins. And he freely paid it all. That's a bargain. Let's read verse 4. We're in James chapter 4. Verse 4. It says, You adulterous people, don't you know that friendship with the world means enmity against God? Therefore, anyone who chooses to be a friend of the world becomes an enemy of God. Or do you think Scripture says without reason that he jealously longs for the spirit he has caused to dwell in us? But he gives us more grace. That is why scripture says God opposes the proud, but shows favor to the humble. Submit yourselves unto God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Come near to God, and he will come near to you. Wash your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Grieve, mourn, and wail. Change your laughter to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves before the Lord, and he will lift you up. To tell God thank you for something or to tell, to tell our parents thank you. Have you ever been mad at your parents and they do something for you? They're like your, your mom whoops you and then cooks you dinner? I mean, I don't know if you can relate to that, but it's like you, you get in trouble, but then later on it's like, okay, well, come, come dinner time. And you're like, thank you. <laughs> but if you still have an attitude, you don't say thank you, maybe you get in trouble. And you know... It can be hard to say thank you for something Mm -hmm. because it takes humility, especially when you have an attitude. It's like, why would I be grateful to God when he didn't do this for me or he hurt me in this way? Or that's our perspective. It takes humility to be grateful to God, to truly pray. You know what's funny? I had a hard time once in my prayer life, and I I didn't know how I was feeling. And a brother kind of got me up at like 4 a.m. and was like, bro, we're going to go pray together. And I was like, I do not want to wake up at 4 a.m. So he had to, like, get me out of bed. We were roommates, amen. He had to get me out of bed, got me out of bed, and took me. And he's like, well, what's wrong with you? And I was like, you know, I don't really know what's wrong with me. I just feel this way. He's like, okay, well, we're going to pray. It's like, oh, great. As soon as I pray, I have to get my heart right. Isn't that awesome, though? Yes. That that we can actually pray to God, but we, we, if you really give your heart in prayer, it will make your heart humble again. It takes humility to be grateful to God, to pray. And I'm grateful that he forced me to pray. Well, he didn't force me. He took me in and was like, okay, you're going to pray. And I chose to pray. And it softened my heart more than I could have thought. To simply approach God in a prayer forces us to humble ourselves. When we have a bad attitude, we feel entitled to something in our hearts. We have, and that's, that means that we're full of pride. Because we think we know. And then we ask God with wrong motives that we want him to deal with the situation or deal with that person. But when we ask with wrong motives, we don't receive because our heart is not lined up with what God's heart is. Why would he grant something that goes against what he says? And we lose our perspectives because we don't get what we want. And not getting what we want is the most common way to lose our perspective about what God sees. And it makes us quarrel and fight. But when we want what God wants, we won't be a friend to the world's way. We won't do things from the world's perspective. We can change our hearts to align with what God wants through powerful prayers from the proper perspective, which ultimately brings us peace. And the path to peace is proper perspective. Our second point is the power of peace. Everyone wants inner peace. Have you guys ever seen Kung Fu Panda? Yes. Master Shifu says this thing. He goes, Master Shifu is like the little, I don't know what he is, but he's like a little like squirrel looking thing, raccoon. He has whiskers and he looks like a rat. I don't know what he is. But he says, he says, inner peace, inner peace. And then someone interrupts him. He's like, what? <laughs> which, which shows that he didn't have any inner peace at all. He was really anxious about the uh, Dragon Warrior. It's a good movie. You go watch it. But he was always anxious. And you know what's funny is, is someone who's truly at peace like that is, is powerful. Someone who's truly at peace is powerful. 
Wasn't it powerful when the, the boat that Jesus was on started going through a storm and all the disciples were freaking out? And what was Jesus doing? He was asleep. And all his disciples were freaking out and they're like, Jesus, save us, you know? And Jesus is like, you have little faith. And Jesus slept. But having Jesus' heart will always lead to having Jesus' peace. Let's look at Philippians 4. Philippians 4, verse 4. It says, Rejoice in the Lord when you feel like it. Oh, what does it say there? Always. Always. That's why it's important to read along in the Bible, right? Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy. Think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me, put it into practice, and the God of peace will be with you. The scripture is a command from God to rejoice in the Lord always. And I believe it's a command because it's not something that is our natural tendency. Rejoice in the Lord always. It's a command because we have to choose to do it. Things are going to happen that we don't like, and we have to have the proper perspective and choose how to respond. The decision to rejoice in the Lord is ultimately the decision to have the right perspective that brings us inner peace and really be grateful. We can choose to have gratitude in any situation that we're in. You know what? Your car could break down. It's like, man, I'm grateful at least I have a car that works once in a while. <laughs> right? I mean, you could think of what you could be grateful for in any situation. The power of gratitude will overcome what society says is normal. Society says we're supposed to react a certain way depending on whatever your circumstances are. But our gratitude transcends those circumstances. The most common way we can lose our perspective is that we don't get what we want. You know, a person who is anxious, because the scripture says, don't be anxious about anything. A person who is anxious is always concerned about what they want to happen. And the anxiety comes from the distance between what's happening and what I want to happen and the control that they think they have over it. When we're anxious, because it says, don't be anxious about anything, but let your gentleness be evident to all. When we're anxious, I don't know if you guys have ever met someone who's like super gentle, but like really anxious. Yeah. It doesn't really make any sense. Yeah. Someone who's really anxious, you know how they're going to respond? I mean, when I get anxious, I, I say things that I regret yeah. in a harsh tone and not control things that I say. I respond erratically. Because my heart is not rooted in gratitude. When we're anxious and we act in those ways, we lose the fruit of the Spirit. It's because our heart is not rooted in gratitude. And that bad attitude comes from not getting what we want. But it's so awesome to be around someone who's really gentle, like someone who's just grateful all the time. Something bad could happen. It's like, man, how are they grateful? That's pretty awesome. Or you do something that offends somebody, and the person is, like, not offended. You're like... Are you serious? Yeah. Like, I just really sinned against you. I offended you. All right, that should have offended you. Why are you not offended? They're like, because I love you. I'm grateful for you. Amen. Wow, that's mercy right there. That's powerful. But when we don't get what we want, we can get anxious. We can have a bad attitude when, with, with the person or cast our anxiety on people. But really, it's God that we need to get back right with. Yeah. And that's the moment we need proper perspective to regain our gratitude. If we really find what we need to be grateful for from the Lord, then we will want what God wants. And it will change our perspective. It's really hard to please someone who's very entitled.
I mean, I remember Christmas, my parents growing up, I, you know, they gave me some gifts and there was some times that I remember feeling like that's it. To my shame, guys, I felt that way from time to time. I'm like, I really wanted this thing and I didn't get it. And I ignore all the other things that they worked really hard to get for me. You know, it's really hard to please someone who's entitled because no matter what you do, you will, ne you will never replace the gratitude they're supposed to have for God. Yeah. And if we expect everyone else to make us happy and we're not getting our peace from God, then we cast a lot of anxiety on other people. But when you're around someone who's grateful, they're gentle, they're not offended easily. When you are that person who's grateful and you're full of gratitude for God, you're not going to get easily offended. So how can you choose to be grateful in your circumstances? Well, we return back to that Luke 11 prayer. Our prayer life restores the fruit of God's spirit within us. Yeah. And that kind of prayer life will help us regain our gratitude needed to change our attitude. How powerful will it be when we pray each day about what is true, like the passage says? What is true? What is noble? What is right? What is pure? What is lovely? What is admirable? If anything is excellent or praiseworthy. I mean, I remember when I first became a baby Christian, I would be walking down the street on my prayer walks. Prayer walks are awesome. If you haven't done a prayer walk, I recommend you do one. You know, it's a little cold out right now. Just wear a jacket. You'll be all right. But I remember walking down the street on a prayer walk, and I look at this tree, and I'm just like, God, that tree is awesome. You created that, you know? And you're walking out. Nothing can really go wrong. We're just full of gratitude. I was so grateful for my salvation. And that's, that's what has kept me faithful this whole time. And I haven't always felt grateful for my salvation, but that's why the command is to rejoice always, even when you don't feel like it, and to always share your testimony, which reminds you of what God has done. And so it's powerful when we go back to God in prayer and we tell God how much we're grateful for and how much he's done for us. I mean, when you wake up in the morning, there's so many things God has already done for you that you don't even think about. Wow. The fact that you're, I mean, I'm not a, a physician. We have a couple in here, you know, but, but the fact that while we're asleep, our heart beats without us thinking about it. You know, the, our lungs work. We breathe in and out without us thinking about it. Our, our lungs exchange oxygen with carbon dioxide. We don't even think about that, that conversion rate. We don't have to worry about it. All these things happen all night, and, and the electricity stays on. You know, it's like there's so many things that just are so, we could be so grateful for from the beginning. And when we take time out of our day to pray, and we tell God how much he's already done for us, we're only alive because of God's grace every day. So we can start with that and have that Luke 11 prayer and tell God how much we're grateful for. And when we think about these things and we, and we present these things to God, and when, you know, there's things that we do want to pray about. The Bible talks about praying with the right motive. When your heart is full of gratitude, you're going to see things from God's perspective, and then you pray about the things that really matter in this life. And you pray for those things or the things that really you need, God will take care of you. I appreciate what Brad shared today for, for uh, contribution. Talked about, don't worry about your life. God will take care of everything. Just seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. But when we do that, we get a peace. The scripture says in Philippians 4, when we were reading, it says that in verse 7, the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. When we stay grateful, we have access to something that is indescribable. It's a sense of peace from God that nothing else can bring us. We present those things to God, and God gives us peace, and it guards our hearts and our minds. Have you guys ever heard of The Secret? Yeah. The Secret. Yeah. Okay, some of us maybe have, but there's a book called The Secret. And, the fo and they turn it into like a little movie or documentary or something like that. But, but the point of this whole thing is it's this perspective of if you just tell the universe what you want, it'll give it back to you. Because people always want something that they don't have. And it's, it's not something I'm trying to encourage you guys to participate in. But the idea is that the world is looking for something and they have to call it the secret to get people to buy into it. Because it's all about getting what you want in this life. Well, the Bible tells us about a secret. Okay, I want to show you the biblical secret. Look in verse 12 and 13. The secret to getting all you want is, is actually right here. In verse 12, it says, I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. 
I have learned the secret. See that right there? That's the secret. Yes. Yeah. Of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I can do all this through him who gives me strength. Wow. So the trick is to actually be content and rely on God every day and tell him what you're grateful for. Because your situation can change in an instant. And then you'll be, you'll, you'll be sad that you weren't grateful for what you had while you had it. Many people are looking for the secret to have a powerful life, to being at peace. But Paul found out about the secret, about being content. And it's doing all things through God who gives us strength. When we truly have the power of gratitude, we will have the power of a proper perspective in our hearts. The gratitude helps us see things from God's perspective. And our, our motivation will be God's motivation. And when we have the proper perspective, we will also have the power of peace in our life. We can be grateful for the things that really matter, our eternity with God. We can be at peace knowing that no matter what happens to me, to my body, my soul cannot be touched. Yeah. Because God holds on to that. Yeah. And when we're grateful for the things that really matter, we have the right perspective and we're at peace we can really have the power of gratitude, which is what is going to change the world. Today, make the decision to have gratitude rooted in the right perspective and to truly be at peace and to God be the glory.